and for the support of the glorious cause. I beg they will accept my most cordial thanks for this distinguished testimony of their approbation. But lest some unlucky event should happen, unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I, this day, declare with utmost sincerity I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Truly, there as is no pay, man better sir, suited to the task. To really? Congress that I can no think of several. Could have Charles Lee. To have this arduous employment at the do I know you? I would not expect you to remember. <laughs> I don't, Connor. There's someone I want you to promise. meet. I will keep an exact account of my expenses. I'm sorry to pull you away Those like that, I doubt but not they the last discharge. thing we need is that the is two of you coming to blows. Now, Connor, allow me to introduce you to our newly appointed Commander-in-Chief, George Washington. Ah, so you're the one who saved Sam and John at Lexington. It was the Patriots who did that. I merely lent support. As humble as he is brave, we could use more men like you. I'm sorry, but if you'll excuse me, I should attend to Charles over there. He looks none too happy about being passed over for command. It was good to meet you, Connor. Tell me you have news of Pitcairn. I'm told he's taken shelter in Boston, where he's guarded by a thousand redcoats. The only way you're gonna get at him is if we draw him out. And lucky for you, we're launching an offensive against the city in order to do just that. Israel Putnam has been given command of our forces. Present this to him and he'll provide whatever aid you require. You'll find him at the encampment on Bunker Hill. You have my thanks. No need. It's the least I could do. Pitcairn's a dangerous man. The sooner we're rid of him, the better. I would say the same of Charles Lee. Now that's an altogether different beast. Let us leave it for another day. Best you head to Boston, Connor.
over here! Amateur! I'm looking for Israel Putnam. On whose orders? Samuel Adams. Follow me. This is not Bunker Hill. Aye, it's Briggs. There's been some disagreement as to where we should encamp. Any news from Boston? The Tories aren't moving. And any time we try to press them, we lose a dozen men. I think Putnam and the others plan to assemble artillery on these hills. A good shelling might make the Red Coast weaken this battlefield. And what of John Pitcairn? That bastard's the cagiest of the bunch. He's appeared time to time to taunt us or send regards by way of cannon fire. It's all right, though. He'll have what's coming to him soon enough. Ah! Putnam's just up ahead. You can't miss him. I don't care much for your excuses, gentlemen. We should be building on Bunker Hill. Breed is closer to the city, but it is also closer to their artillery! was silenced. Oh, that poor guy might be forced to get off his arse and come forward. I shall fly this flag to signal my success. And I shall speak fondly of you at your funeral.
Better weapons, better training. But I do not fear. And neither should you. For what they have in material, they lack in conviction and care. But not us. We have discipline. We have order. And most importantly, we have passion. We believe. To maintain vigilance. Serve your ammo. Ensure a proper line of sight. And above all else, men, do not fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Love me, Dan. That was quite a speech. Lies, all of it, I'm afraid. Still, such words have carried us thus far. And what of Kit Karn? He's left Boston, as I said he would, and set up camp on Holton Hill. There's no good way to get at him. Not with that maelstrom growing down below. I suppose you could circle around a bit. 
a way for us to fill their ranks. There is no time. I will have the chance of direct approach. That's twice today you proposed the impossible. I see no other choice. Not because you're mad as a March Hare, son. I expect an apology on my return. To protect Adams and Hancock and those they serve, you meant to kill them. Kill them? Are you mad? I wanted only to parley. There was so much to discuss, to explain. You put into that now. If you speak true, then I will carry your last words to them. They must lay down their arms. They must stop this war. Why them and not the Redcoats? Do you not know think we ask the same question of the British? These things take time. And I would have succeeded had you let me play my part. Part of the puppeteer. Or better we hold the strings on another. No, the strings should be severed. All should be free. And we should live forever on castles in the sky. You wield your blade like a man, but your mouth like a child. And more will die now. Because of that. Sahan yonder in the hotel on the set up with. Tini on the Yahoo ten at on the set up with. Okay. 
dare you sneak up on me like that? Why don't you just go out there and just help this cat retreat? Don't ever do that again, you hear me? God damn it! General Putnam. You live. The same cannot be said for Pitcairn. Well done, I suppose. <laughs> but it matters little now. I'm ordering a full retreat. We have lost too many in exchange for too little. If the Tories want this hill so badly, let them have it. Boston is the true prize. We have a bigger problem. What do you mean? This can't be right. It says they plan to murder Washington.